Since the dawn of civilization, there have been many attempts to classify living organisms. It was done by natural instinct, not using criteria that were scientific, but, born out of need to use organisms for our own use, such as for food, shelter and clothing. Aristotle, was the earliest to attempt, a more scientific basis, for classification. Aristotle, used simple morphological characters, to classify plants, into trees, shrubs, and herbs. He also divided animals, into two groups, those which had red blood, and those that did not. In Linnaeus' time, a two-kingdom system of classification was developed. Plantae kingdom for plants, and Animalia kingdom for animals. Limitations of two-kingdom classification. This system, did not distinguish between the eukaryotes and prokaryotes, unicellular and multicellular organisms and photosynthetic and non-photosynthetic organisms. Classification, of organisms into plants, and animals was easily done, and was easy to understand, but, a large number of organisms did not fall, into either category. Besides gross morphology, a need, was also felt for including other characteristics like, structure of the cell, nature of wall, mode of nutrition, habitat, methods of reproduction, evolutionary relationships, etc. R. H. Whitaker, in 1969, proposed a five-kingdom classification. The kingdoms were defined by him, and were named, Manera, Pratista, Fungi, Plantae, and, Animalia. Bacteria, are the sole members, of the kingdom Manera. They can live in extreme habitats such as, hot springs, deserts, snow, and oceans. Many of them live in, or, on, other organisms, as parasites. Bacteria, are grouped under four categories based on their shape, spherical shaped coccus, rod shaped bacillus comma-shaped vibrium, and, spiral spirillum. Some bacteria, are autotrophic. They synthesize, their own food from inorganic substrates. They may be, photosynthetic autotrophic, or, chemosynthetic autotrophic. The vast majority, of bacteria are heterotrophs. They depend on other organisms, or on dead organic matter for food. Our key bacteria, these bacteria are special, as they live in some of the most harsh habitats, like, extreme salty areas, hot springs, and, marshy areas. They are able to survive extreme conditions, because they have a different cell wall structure, compared to other bacteria. Methanogens, 
present in the gut of several ruminant animals, are responsible for the production of methane from the dung of these animals. Eubacteria Eubacteria are also known as true bacteria. They have a rigid cell wall, and if motile, a flagellum. The cyanobacteria, also known as blue-green algae, have chlorophyll as similar to green plants, and are photosynthetic autotrophs. They are unicellular, colonial or filamentous, freshwater or marine or terrestrial algae. The colonies are generally surrounded by gelatinous sheep. Some of these organisms can fix atmospheric nitrogen in specialized cells called heterocysts. Examples are Nostoc and Anabana. Chemosynthetic autotrophic bacteria oxidize various inorganic substances such as nitrates, nitrites, and ammonia and use the released energy for their ATP production. They play a great role in recycling nutrients like nitrogen, phosphorus, iron and sulfur. Heterotrophic bacteria are most abundant in nature and are important decomposers. They are helpful in making curd from milk, production of antibiotics, fixing nitrogen in legume roots etc. Some are pathogens, causing damage to human beings, crops, farm animals, and pets. Cholera, typhoid, tetanus, citrus canker are well-known diseases caused by different bacteria. Bacteria reproduce mainly by fission. Sometimes, under unfavorable conditions, they produce spores. The mycoplasma are organisms that completely lack cell wall. They are the smallest known living cell and can survive without oxygen. Many mycoplasma are pathogenic in plants and animals.